We have arrived at the destination, $100 Mind Inn, with none other than the birthday boy, Daniel Chang. Uh, 21 year old to 50 uh, year old uh, Asian male. Uh, Jeff Busky, thanks so much for this card. Your books. Jesus. All right. Look at it. Oh, that's awesome. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I did not tell him to say Oh my God. <laughs> Breast watermelon. What? Oh, All right, Dan, you first, then. This is a mess. That's the Chili paste. 20 stars. Dim sum. Shrimp toast. This is wonton soup. Peking duck. Duck wrap, Peking duck sweet bun. Dungeons crab. Hello, crab. This is the wagyu, guys. This is the wagyu. Oh. This, is, this is eight out of ten. Oh. Maybe nine out of ten. Maybe nine, yeah. I like the wagyu. I'm done. Much more, Vinny? We're gonna have to clear some of this today. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. I want to win some money, that's all I want to do. It really is. The win, $1,100 buy-in, $400,000 guaranteed prize pool. You know it's gonna go over that. We're looking at probably a $600,000 prize pool. We're playing on day 1C. Tomorrow is day two. The plan is to bag and tag around midnight. Hopefully we put 222,000 in the bag. That is my intention. I'm putting it in the universe. Let's make it happen. This $1,100 tournament will be slightly tougher than the $400 or $600 tournaments. Makes sense, but you know, that's just how it works. More name pros are gonna make the time to travel to Las Vegas or just get out of bed to play the bigger buy-ins because they see that bigger first place prize. The same thing kind of goes for recreationals also. They wanna win six figures in a tournament. Hey, I wanna win six figures. Is it my time? Let's ride the heater of our $400 40K victory. Our time is now. 2020 is the year of Boski. Let's get it. It smells like victory in the air. Right side of the I got it. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. 25,000 ship starting stack. Blinds are 200, 300, 300. Second hand dealt to me. I look down at pocket kings in early position. We make it 900. 3x is fine being this deep. Two calls behind me, and then the small blind makes it 2100. Seems to be some sort of recreational, so. We assume he's just clicking buttons and he doesn't have the aces. So time to not play a four-way pot. So we put in that four bet to 7,000. Action folds back to him and he eventually puts in the call. Flop comes, ace, nine, five, two hearts. We do not have the king of hearts. He thinks for 10 seconds and leads into me. This is not a thing. He bets 5,000. What do we do against this bet in position? Do we just fold our kings. Think about what type of hands he'd use such a small sizing with pre-flop. Pocket nines, ace king, are these are these possibilities? Ace queen, pocket queens. It's really hard to put a man on a range when he might not even know what he's doing to begin with. So, uh, can't do the max exploit strategy just yet. Can't just fold on any ace high flop just because they bet, so we put in the call. Turns an eight, and he leads 8,000. We have 13,000. Really putting us to the test here. I think he'll have a, a lot of flush draws. We don't have the king of hearts. King, queen of hearts, jack 10 of hearts. 
We're just hoping he's just clicking buttons or he's got a heart draw. So let's keep him honest and put in the call. The river's a four of diamonds. He checks, looks like he's given up with his missed flush draw. We check behind, no reason to bet. And he shows ace king offsuit. And we have 5,000 chips decimated. With a 400 big blind, we're under the gun with king 10 offsuit, eight handed, 4,200 chips, blaze it. We ship it in there, get called by ace queen. Our tournament life is on the line. Let's get there. What is your name? Sean. Where are you from, Sean? Myself. Thank you. Canada. Queen. All right. Good luck, guys. I'm out. And I'm out of the win. $1,100, 400K guaranteed and record time once again. Am I being overconfident? Am I afraid of the big laydown? Am I playing to win too much? Regardless, I got one more bullet in the chamber. Let's not give up just yet. Regroup, stay focused, make good decisions. Information is power. Let's absorb that information. Uh, $1,100 tournament. Got some money. Our new table looks very soft. A uh, very pleasant surprise in a $1,100 buy-in tournament, but the win will bring in the pros and the recreationals, so I always appreciate a nice mix. With blinds at 200-400, 21 to 35-year-old Asian male limps under the gun. Action folds to us on the button, and I look down at East King offsuit. 23,000 chips in our stack, a mandatory raise. Let's go 4X, 1,600 to play. Small blind calls and the under the gun limper rips it in my face just over 15,000 chips what's he repping a mid pair ace queen i don't know but we're not raised folding this hand for 40 blinds i put in the call small blind folds and we're up against ace jack a dream scenario let's hold Yes. Everybody loves a chop pot, especially when you have the worst hand. We have one player at our table, sunglasses, headphones, hat, and hoodie, who's playing every single hand, a lot of limping, a lot of min betting, a lot of min three betting. A real action player, but we're looking to get involved in pots with him. With about a 20,000 stack, blinds are now 300, 500, 500. Same Asian male limps under the gun again. Is he setting up the old limp shove? Very possible with his uh, 12 to 15K stack. I'm on the button with ace, 10 of clubs. Perfectly fine to have a limping range here. No one's been getting too out of line to my left. The blinds do complete. And we're four ways to a flop of queen, 10, three, one club. Checks to me, uh, good bet here, but we don't need too much protection. So I check behind, looking to get value on future streets. It turns an eight of clubs, a great card, unless someone has jack nine. The blinds do check and under the gun limper, that's 1500. Uh, pretty straightforward call here. No reason to raise. Definitely not folding. We call and the river is the ace of diamonds. We got two pair and he bets 3,500. King Jack, Jack nine, ace queen. These are a few hands that beat us, but at first I wanted to just shove for value, but I don't think he's gonna call with much worse. So we just put in the call. Two pair should be good here, unless he has exactly pocket eights. And he gets us again. Ready? 
And we are on the 420 break with 30,000 chips. After 15 years of playing poker for a living, I still can't control my emotions. My happiness level is directly correlated to the recent events and the size of my stack. If I win five pots in a row, I'm feeling great. If I lose five pots in a row, I'm tilting my brains off. As hard as it is to become numb to the swings, financially and emotionally, it's still tough. I'm still human. I may talk like a robot, but I have feelings too. Let's stay emotionally stable and focus. Let's do what we did when we won the $400 tournament. Let's find the zone. Congrats on the win. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. The table's been playing very tight, very straightforward, so it's time to change things around here. Under the Gun opens to 2,000, possibly Hawaiian male, age 21 to 30. Action folds me in late position. I have king, queen, offsuit. 25,000 chips, a great candidate for that three bet. Make it 5,500 or repping aces. Action folds to the small blind. Older Middle Eastern male with a sleeve on his head. Shoves all in for 18.5. Under the gun folds, and we're in a horrible spot. Cold four bed versus these positions against any sane opponent. Our king queen is gonna be behind for sure, but are we getting the right price to call? Against a range of maybe tens plus, ace king, ace queen, we might have 35% equity. We're getting about two to one on the call, but I'm just not feeling it, and we put in the fold. He does it. <laughs> And we have made it to dinner break. Two bullets, $2,200. We're at Earth Cafe for the first time. They got some nice, healthy, unique items on the menu. Real first class dining, 30 bucks for dinner. Pretty reasonable. Let's enjoy turkey burger. Hey. Chai boba tea uh, and some Granny Smith apple pie. I haven't called a clock on anybody in probably a year, but all good things must come to an end. I had to call the clock on Christos, notorious tanker. Doesn't even do it for a reason, just does it to tilt people, just to troll the whole table. See how long it takes before someone calls the clock on them. Unacceptable. But not going to tilt us. We're here to do work. When you're in for $2,200, you can't let these external factors affect your judgment. Every hand is important. I have to make good decisions in every spot. And the rest is up to luck and fate. I didn't steal that from Lakers could still come back. <laughs> Philly's blown. Oh, yeah. yeah, Philly's blown. With well, a 1500 big blind action folds to us in the cutoff. I have ace, deuce of spades, a little bit too much to jam, but we can fit this in our raise fold range. So I make it 3000 to go. Small blind calls and big blind calls, both Asian males. Flop comes 955, two clubs, checks to me, and I don't see any reason to bet here. Uh, it's going to hit their range a little harder than mine. I check behind. The turn is an offsuit three, and small blind leads out for 5,500. First, you have to think about what his flat calling range is from the small blind when he has about 70,000 chips, and I'm opening off of a 17 blind stack. I think he's three betting all mid pairs, and I think he's flatting hands like suited broadways, like king queen, jack 10, occasionally flatting small suited connectors like six, seven, seven, eight. When the big blind folds, I think ace high is good enough to continue with, so we put in the call. The plan is to call any river that isn't a club or a middling card. The river is a three, a beautiful brick, and he bets out 15,500. We have 18,000 total. If we do call, it isn't for our tournament life. That's number one. And number two is that we don't block any of the missed draws that we want him to have. Hands like 
two cards that contain clubs. We don't have any clubs. Or two middling cards like 6-7, six, 6-8, seven, six, eight, seven, eight. We don't have any of those, so it's more likely he does. The plan was to call on a brick. The river was a brick. Let's stick to the plan and put in that hero call for the majority of our stack. He shows 9-10 of diamonds. Good value bet. If he's flatting 9-10, he's probably flatting 7-8. And we're down to 2.2 big blinds. A few hands later, I'm in early position with ace 10 of spades. I make it 3,000 to go with a 500 chip behind. Action folds to the big blind, a notorious scammer named Sammy. I think he's from Pakistan or something. I'll rant about scammers some other time. They shouldn't be allowed in many poker rooms. They're just a virus to the community and they should be abolished. Shout out to all the scammers out there. So after I make it 3,000, Scam and Sammy calls in the big blind. The flop comes A7-3, he checks. I go all in for one 500 chip and he folds. And the whole table laughs at him. Got him. I have to fold my big blind. And then action folds to Scam and Sammy in the cutoff who makes it 4,000. I'm in the small blind with ace eight offsuit, put in the flat call with 2K behind. There's 3K in the big blind, big blind ante. That's a great overlay. We got a decent ace. Let's gamble. Flop comes Jack nine, nine, I believe. And I go for the stop and go once again, 2000. He calls and shows Jack eight. We got three outed on the flop. Let's spike an ace. All in. Very much. And I am out of the win. $1,100, $400,000 guaranteed tournament. Two bullets, $2,200, gone.